Hi everyone, Ellen here. I hope that you are finding some moments to enjoy this summer, even though we are facing a crisis on so many fronts still. Today, I would like to share with you a few thoughts about events and how to think about them this year. Our Perio team is getting asked on a daily basis, should we take our events virtual? And if so, how do we do it? Honestly, we're in uncharted territory here and nobody has a roadmap, but there are a few myths that have been gaining traction that I feel like it's important that we bust. Full disclosure, I love events. I've planned them, I've fundraised for them, I've attended them. I am a super social person and I really love gathering with others to celebrate the causes that we care about. So as I'm busting these myths, I have no agenda beyond how can we best serve the causes that we care about. Let's dig in. Myth number one. Virtual events are a big success. As an industry, we desperately want virtual events to be successful because that means that our pivot this year simply involves taking something that we already do and getting some tech geeks to make the magic happen in a different space. We keep hearing stories of success and certainly the companies who stand to gain financially have been very vocal about the potential of these platforms. But there are two things you need to know. One, the events that have worked exceptionally well virtually are marquee events. Those are the events that we can all name that are so ingrained within our community that we can't imagine not doing them. Most events don't fall into this category. They are raising significantly less than they did in person. Number two, most of the dollars raised virtually for events are raised before the event, essentially through major gifts and DIY peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. The event is mostly just the celebration. So ask yourself, about the people that you're planning to ask for an event gift. How could I inspire them to give otherwise? In all likelihood, you may not need the event, or if you do, a much, much simpler event will do. Myth number two, virtual events are the future. It's becoming more and more clear that virtual events are not the miracle pill the industry hoped for when COVID hit. For one thing, people have been disappointed. So many events are simply fancy videos with no interactive component, which is one of the many reasons we make time for events. Why would I pay to watch a fancy video? Second, shiny objects only hold our attention for so long. In March and April, virtual events were new and exciting. Now, they're more and more, yeah. Think about this fall. With all of the fall events gone virtual, plus many rescheduled spring events joining the party, realistically, how many people are going to spend that much time attending virtual events? It's the donors who are going to start saying to you, can't I just write you a check? Myth number three, I don't have a choice. And actually that's where your choices come in. Donors do want to just write you a check or really they want to donate online. We've gotten it into our own heads that we have to go through a party in order to justify our ask that we have to give them something in order to cajole them into giving. The reality is people want to give, foundations want to give, companies want to give, and they want to give to your mission. The event at this point is just details. So free yourself from the pressure to go virtual. Think instead, how can I use all the time I now have from not having the hard work of an in-person event ahead of me to spend more time with my donors? to ask them to support our work directly, and then, if as needed, use any events I plan to simply and thoughtfully think and inspire them. At Aperio, we believe in the power of your mission. There is something that you are doing that the world needs right now. That is what donors want to support, and they want to do it before you throw them a party. Thank you.